husband and I um, had lost our son. And then the lockdown occurred and depression got worse and worse. And, and my husband had suggested, why don't you work with the horses again? Bring yourself back to life. And so finally, I was out riding. When, before we got to the river, she exploded out from under me. There was a long sandy area that, you know, a lot of horses run and I just leaned over, threw myself off. I hit and everything exploded. Anyway, I made it to the hospital. It turned out I'd broken my clavicle and um, seven ribs, chipped a couple of vertebrae and compressed my lung. They had me in a waiting area with a bunch of other patients on gurneys, no masks. There was a guy six feet away from me that they were draining his lung who had COVID. He had no mask, I had no mask, but we were going to one of the tests and, and I said to the guy pushing my gurney, I said, you know, shouldn't I have a mask on too? Oh, yeah. Just put a sheet over your face, you should be fine. Which of course I did. I asked for COVID tests and they bring in these infectious disease doctors and they say, oh, you only have two of the five symptoms. Nah, it's not worth it. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. We've been spending thousands of dollars on MRIs and sonograms and two x-rays a day, all these other tests. Can I please have the $150 COVID test? So they did and 15 minutes later, I was diagnosed with COVID. That was terrifying enough, but then my legs were feeling strange and I pulled up the covers and that my legs were swelling. Anyway, so a doctor came in at that point, sat down, said, look, you know, I just want to prepare you. We may have to remove your legs. Your blood clots are pretty bad. They took a foot and a half uh, blood clots out of each leg, um, but at least luckily and thankfully, I got to keep my legs. I built relationships with some of the nurses and they were nervous too. And a lot of them were wearing the same PPE over and over they weren't getting new masks every day. They were having to reuse masks for more than a couple of days at a time. So the fact that they had to reuse them also tells me that there wasn't enough PPE for patients. I feel bad for the nurses too that had to work under those conditions. They put their life on the line every day and especially in that situation too. In May of 2020, I was a charge nurse at the time when my nurses started getting sick. Um, I, f I felt, and I still carry the guilt. Because I can remember we weren't universally testing our patients, meaning the ER wasn't testing, even though nurse leaders had asked administration, universally test everyone that comes through the ER so we know. But we weren't doing that yet. Everything changed from day to day, almost week to week sometimes. Our hospital would send out directives on a sheet of paper, um, that was Xerox and it would show up at the nurse's station. And you're getting an N95 if you have this kind of patient. Only if you have this kind of patient can you get an N95. And so when more became sick and more became sick in areas that were deemed clean or non-COVID, that's when we did our silent protest. We need proper protection for all. We need proper PPE for all our protest to make sure that everyone got equal PPE, which is something you should never have to fight for. PPE became more readily available. There's a box of, that's full of N95s at our nursing station, every shift that I go to work. But sometimes seeing that box in the morning, it's like, dang, we were literally fighting over that stuff in that box. It hurts a little bit.
when I came home from the hospital, my husband already arranged to have oxygen tanks. So I was on oxygen a lot in the beginning. He probably stopped getting up in the middle of the night maybe a couple of months ago. But he would get up in the middle of the night, check if I was breathing, check my saturation, check my heartbeat. And poor guy. A couple of weeks after I got home, I got a notice from the hospital. The hospital bill alone was over a million dollars. Luckily, I got a letter in the mail that said, because I'd had COVID, that I wouldn't be responsible, legally responsible for the hospital portion of the bill. I thought, great. Knowing what I know now, I'd walk 3,000 miles not to go to that hospital again. I walked twice around the world to be somewhere else. <laughs>